Hello friends, this video on P block elements part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to appreciate the general trends in the chemistry of elements of the group 15, 16 and 17 elements. So we will study my P block elements. In P block elements we will be studying 15, 16, 17 and 18 groups. Group 13 and 14 we have already studied in the previous class. We will learn how to prepare dinitrogen and phosphorus and also some of its properties of important compounds. We will describe again the preparation and properties of and use of dioxygen and ozone and chemistry of simple oxides. We will know the allotropes, allotropes form of sulfur. We will again prepare chlorine, HCl. We will also know the chemistry of halogens and structures of oxo acids of halogens. We will understand the use of noble gas. We will appreciate the importance of these all these elements and their compound in our day to day life. So the first question is what are P block elements? Right? So if you see this is the periodic table, this is S block on the left hand side. Then you have P block. Then you have D block and then you have F block. So going by definition, the, the P block elements are the elements whose the last electron enters the outermost P orbital. Please note, that's why it's called P block because the last electron enters the outermost P orbital. This you can easily see from the electronic configuration. Helium is the exception here. Helium is considered to be in P block, but actually if you see helium, helium, the la it doesn't have any uh, p orbital law. So helium is the only exception. In fact, there is a uh, debate on whether helium belongs to S block and P block. And some textbook says helium is in S block. Some says helium is in P block. But even in this case, we'll consider helium as P block. Although uh, in helium, the last electron doesn't enter p orbital. But the general definition is. If the last electron enters s orbital, we classify them as s block. If the last electron enters p orbital, we classify them as p block. If the last electron enters d orbital, we classify them as d block. If the last electron enters f orbital, we classify them as f block. That is how the classification is. Helium is an exception. Helium, since the properties of helium is in the, well, uh, matches with the group 18 elements and group 18 is in the p block. So we consider helium also in the P block. The next question is, we now know what are P block elements. The next question is, why should we study P block elements? So in this uh, uh, slide, I'll talk about uh, P block group 15, 16, 17 and 18 elements only because other elements we have already discussed. 13 and 14 we have discussed. So now we'll talk about the uses of Typically, group 15, 16, 17, and 18 elements of the P block. The first is urea and fertilizers. If you see in urea and fertilizer, nitrogen is used, phosphorus is used, sulfur is used. So, all these are my P block elements. So, if we talk about uh, human, in human being, the proteins which we have, the, the muscles which we build, that is also nothing but nitrogen, the proteins. And that is a P block element. In uh, refrigerant, we use nitrogen. In rocket fuel, we use nitrogen. In the food industry, when you want, when you prepare soft drink, baking powder, etc., you use phosphorus. That is also my P block element. You want to make insecticides, weed killers. So here we use arsenic and arsenic is again my P block elements. If you see the alloys, the alloys we use antimony also a lot, antimony. Antimony is my P block element, right? If you talk about the oxygen which we breathe, right, in which we or the plants take oxygen, this is again oxygen is my P block element, the most critical element for our survival is oxygen and that is P block element. If you see the ozone layer that protects us from the harmful UV rays, 
right? This ozone is my P block element. Ozone is nothing but you get ozone from oxygen, and oxygen is P block element. The vulcanized rubber you get, right? For this hardening of rubber, you use sulfur, and sulfur is again P block element. The sulfuric acid, the most common uh, acid in the lab that has sulfur, that is P block element. That is oxygen, that's also P block element. Right? If you talk about semiconductor, in semiconductor we use selenium. And selenium is also my P block element. If you talk about disinfectant of water, we use chlorine. We use chlorine for disinfectant of water. And chlorine is again my P block element. Iodine. Iodine helps to maintain the or to secrete the thyroid hormones. Right? If you don't have, uh, if you have deficiency of iron, you get this disease called goiter. So here my iodine that is used to uh, prepare or to produce thyroid hormones is again my P block element. The common salt that we use a lot in our day to day life that has Na plus and Cl minus and Cl is nothing but my P block elements. Toothpaste. Toothpaste has a lot of fluorine. Right, this, this fluorine is nothing but my P block element. If you talk about the lighting which you see in a lot of shops, these are all uh, neon or helium is used in this case, right? So they are all uh, P block element. Again, if you see in this case, my neon lighting or helium lighting, these are all my P block elements. So these are the, some of the uses of P block element. This is not the exhaustive list. And please note I have covered only group 15, 16, 17 and 18 here. Because group 14 and 13 is something we already discussed in, the, in class 11. So these are some of the common use of P block elements. Having understood the criticality of P block elements, especially nitrogen to build proteins in our, uh, to build proteins for our body or oxygen, that is the most critical element for our survival. Let's start the chapter of P block element. Uh, the, the first thing which I want to discuss before even going forward with P-block element is the concept of inert pair effect. We already studied this uh, effect in uh, class 11th, but we'll repeat this. See, the maximum oxidation state shown by any P-block element, this is my P-block element, all the elements are P-block elements, is typically the total number of valence electrons. For example, carbon, the valence electron is 4, correct? 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, so the number of valence 2s2, 2p2. We talk about the second orbital, the maximum number of valence electron is 4. For nitrogen, if you see, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So the maximum number of valence electron is 2 plus 3, 5. Oxygen, if you see, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So maximum number of valence electron is 6. Similarly, fluorine, if you see, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, 2 plus 5, 7. So the maximum number of valence electron is 7. So typically, the maximum oxidation state shown by this P block element is equal to the number of valence electron. For example, carbon shows maximum of plus 4 oxidation state. Nitrogen will show maximum of plus 5 oxidation state. Similarly, oxygen will show maximum of plus 6 oxidation state. Correct. But if you go down the group, if you go down the group, what happens is the maximum oxidation state is not shown. For example, if you talk about Bi, it will not show plus 5 oxidation state. If you talk about Sn, it may not show plus 4 oxidation state, right? So what is happening is the moment you go down, as you go down the group, oxidation state of two units less than my maximum oxidation state or you can say the group oxidation state for uh, group carbon the group oxidation state is four for group nitrogen the group oxidation state is four right five similarly for group oxygen the group oxidation number of oxidation state is six so these elements down the group they don't show the maximum value they show two oxidation state less that is what it is seen experimentally right so these guys may show let's suppose this is may show plus three this may show plus four right so 
the question is why why there is only a difference of plus 2 why why not why not a difference of 3 or 4 then experimented is seen that if you see these s has two orbital i mean two electron right these s so the justification given is and this is only for my p block elements please note this is only for my inert pair effect is only for my p block why why i'll tell you why because if you see p block elements before this p there's s right and if you go down the group what is happening your size is increasing right if you go down the group your size is increasing but your charge is also increasing a lot right your charge is increasing a lot so in this case if you go down the group the charge increase a lot right charge increase a lot size increase but the charge increase more the, the increase in the nuclear charge is much more than corresponding increase in size right charge increase a lot size increase okay you can say it. so with this since it has more charge it has more charge here the elect uh, the uh, atoms has more charge it will hog the electrons it will attract the electrons and s orbitals these s orbitals they are almost very very near to the uh, electrons so these s orbitals will not take part in the bond since they will not take part in the bond formation you have to ignore these for the oxidation state because oxidation state typically for example you say co2 you say carbon is plus 4 why because it is bonded to two oxygen atoms correct so similarly h2o you will say you will say oxygen is minus 2 why because these oxygen is bonded to two hydrogen atoms but when you go down the group since the charge is increasing a lot and the size is okay types this is in okay types increase in size so what is happening here is this s orbital which is just before this p orbital these s orbitals they don't take part in the bond formation so s orbital they don't take part in the bond formation see anyway these will never take part one as orbital because the valence orbitals only take part in the bond formation that is something we know out of these valence orbit orbital also these s orbitals valence or you can say valence s orbitals yeah yeah typically all the valence orbitals take part in the reaction uh, in the bond formation but in this case as you go down so the size increase in the the charge increase a lot and size increase a little less so these uh, electrons are hogged by the atoms and the s orbitals actually they don't take part the valence s orbitals they don't take part in the bond formation so the maximum oxidation state shown by the lower or the heavier elements in the group is two less than my group oxidation number correct why only two because this is 2s2 okay thank you Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.